Good afternoon, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome to the fourth and final episode of our Nuclear Craft tutorial series. Um, I do apologize, it took a little while to get this episode out, um, as I'm sure you're probably aware. Um, it, I've been really, really busy in addition to um, the editing, I've made some adjustments to that. It does take a lot longer to edit videos, um, that's why I haven't been able, I haven't had as much time to get... Um, you know as many videos out lately and um, plus it took me a, a little while to figure out how these work and you know kind of mess with them and everything um, but so today we're going to be covering the particle accelerators now keep in mind that these are not finished as of right now um, all that they are going to produce um, at the moment is antimatter so um, which you can use that to make the antimatter bombs um, that we've talked about in a previous episode, um, and you'll notice that antimatter does say temporary right there. Um, now, let's grab some antimatter. I'll show you one thing. Oops. You want to make sure and not drop this, um, because if we run over here, I can't remember if I ever showed you guys this, but if you were to drop the antimatter on the ground, you'll notice that we get a decent sized crater. Um, so it is, it is kind of dangerous. <laughs> um, make sure and don't hit that Q button. Or whatever, you know, whatever you have drop items set to. But, um, anyway, let's jump into it. We'll just briefly go over this. Um, it's not too, too difficult to set up once you understand um, the way that it's set up. Because it's really similar to um, the uh, fusion reactors and stuff that we've, or the fission reactors that we've done before. Um, so the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need to produce some liquid helium. Um, so the way that you're going to do this, you can, um, your helium four cells, you can run them through the helium liquefier, um, to get your liquid helium four. And then you're going to need to actually get it into a fluid form. So to do that, um, you can run it just through the fluid transposer. Um, if you have thermal expansion, um, but the mo uh, nuclear craft does add its own way, which is the helium extractor. Um, you put that through, and you're going to get your empty fluid cells and your liquid helium. Now, it does take a while. It does take a really long time, um, and I noticed in my testing that the thermal expansion method is much faster, um, but for example, well, this one's, this one's not running. Um, let's set one up right over here and we'll put some helium in there and I did notice that you cannot use speed upgrades in this or anything either so um, you'll notice that it does take a while <laughs> and for each of these you'll get a thousand millibuckets of liquid helium so if you're going to set up a particle accelerator with this you're going to need a bunch of these um, running not to mention you know your actual helium production and your uh, uh, oh your uh, liquefier what's it called again your helium liquefier um, so you're going to need a good source of creating the helium a good liquefier and quite a few um, liquid helium extractors um, because this does consume a lot of he uh, liquid helium so for each of these superconducting or no, electromagnetic, electromagnetic supercoolers that you use, you're going to need one millibucket of liquid helium per second, which doesn't really sound like a lot. However, when you have, um, this is a very small particle accelerator. Um, I read that once it's finished, if you want to get all the different uh, particles in a single particle accelerator, you're going to want a 100 by 100 um, size particle accelerator. So um, to do that you are going to need a lot of liquid helium, like a lot. Um, granted these creative portable tanks are overkill right here. That's because I was having an issue for some reason this wasn't getting the liquid helium in it and I had to add a bunch of more, like way overkill on liquid helium before it was like okay I think we've got enough liquid helium to run. Um, I don't know it was kind of acting up on me but I know it's still very much a work in progress so um, 
But so we've got that being produced. And of course, we'll want to pipe that out with uh, just liquid pipes or anything. Um, and then you're also going to want to get yourself some electron capsules. Now, these are fairly easy to create. Um, if we look in here, you can just run some empty capsules and some hydrogen cells through the ionizer. And that's going to get you protons and electrons. Um, so once you have your liquid helium and your um, electrons, the way that you set this up is you're going to do, oh, sorry. Um, basically, you're going to have a superconducting electromagnet, and you're going to have those whoops, in that sort of a shape there um, with the center hollow, just like how we set up um, these fission reactors, these electromagnets on this, um, exactly the same. However, you're also going to want to add electromagnetic supercoolers, and those are going to need to go on the corners. So you end up with this 3x3 three three hollowed out uh, multi-block type structure. And you're going to want to build that all the way around. So this is like the tubing that you're going to run around that. So you end up with this like big 3x3. Three three. Now I have RTGs just placed. Uh, basically just because I was lazy and didn't feel like running a bunch of piping um, because these do produce 500 RF a tick and um, each of these superconducting electromagnets require 500 RF a tick so it kind of just works out um, now I did notice that when I run this it does drop on power so I almost think either these aren't producing right at 500 or maybe these are consuming more than 500 or maybe um, because this one's not, I don't know, some, somewhere some power is getting lost. So I'm not entirely sure. Um, also, just for the record, if you're going to do a corner with this, um, you know, it's fairly easy to do. Just bring it around like that. And then your super coolers. Just like that. And then, of course, it would, you know, come out right there. Um, so basically, you just want that center hollow, and it's going to run around uh, the entire structure. Now, you don't, unlike the fission reactor, you don't have anything that goes in the middle. Um, you could build your house in the middle if you wanted. It really doesn't matter. You can have stuff in here, but you're not required to have anything in there. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, once you build that all the way around, um, if we bust this open, you'll see it's just... It's the exact same thing, superconducting electromagnets and electromagnet supercoolers. Um, once you have that done, you're going to want to put a controller block on a corner. Now, um, it took me a little while to figure this out. The corner is, let's say for example that this is our setup. Your corner is not going to be right here. It's going to be a corner that is linear with your electromagnets that are that run across the top and the bottom so you would put it say right here um, so in this case we could put our controller right there and it would uh, be connected into the system so if you notice over here right there would be my superconducting electromagnets and right there is my controller block so um, once you have that set up, you're going to need to give that power. Now I did, the way I understand it, you don't, like, of course you're not going to be able to access the magnet that's behind this controller, um, but it doesn't have to be powered. Um, you can get away without some of these being powered because it is, it does recognize that it's getting enough power. Um, I guess would be the way to explain that. So, um, aside from that though, you want to try to supply all your electromagnets with uh, power and that includes the bottom the top and the inner sides um, and each of those is going to require 500 RF a tick so it is an extreme power hog um, to run this thing especially if you build out a 100 by 100 it's gonna be crazy um, and then all the uh, super coolers are going to require liquid helium so you're gonna have to run that across all um, the blocks so for each block of course you're gonna have four power connections and four liquid connections um, it is a very 
very expensive multi-block to make. Um, if we look in here, um, you know, your superconducting electromagnets and your supercoolers are going to be the main thing that you're going to build. Um, it requires five tough alloy magnesium uh, diboride wiring and reinforced plating and advanced plating on the corners. Very, very expensive. Um, and for, you know, each of these wirings, you're going to need two ingots. Basically, it is incredible incredibly expensive like it I was floored when I saw it um, these aren't as bad but they're still pretty rough considering that these are crafted one at a time so this is a very very late game um, thing it'll be after your reactors and everything because you're going to need a massive amount of power to fuel this not to mention all your hydrogen creation or your uh, liquid um, what liquid uh, helium creation um, so now once you have that set up and you have it all powered and you have liquid ran to everything, um, you have your controller blocked down, um, you can open up this GUI here and you're going to see the size, like this one is an 11 by 11 uh, synchronotron. Um, it'll tell you the power that's in that and that is displayed right here, this red meter. Um, your fuel level, um, which is displayed right here in the green, and I'll show you in a second how you add fuel to that, it's really simple. Um, your efficiency, which will be right here, it's a blue bar. Um, you'll see it go up once we start running this. Um, basically, it's going to make your uh, reactor run a bit more efficiently. You're going to get more um, of the antimatter and everything. Now, I'm not entirely sure how it affects the fuel ratio. Um, I couldn't really tell much of a difference as I got the efficiency up, but that was just me. Um, but I do have an issue. I can't run this for a really long time because the power drains out, and uh, I don't know. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I'd be better off running the Ender I.O. conduits. If you set this up in your world, I would suggest doing Ender I.O. conduits instead of the RTGs. Um, also, uh, let's see, your sections online is going to tell you how much of your area is active. Um, and ours is 87%, which seems low. Um, and of course, that's going to affect our efficiency as we start running. But everything, I mean, everything lights up green. So I don't know. I'm not entirely sure why our areas aren't being used. Because the only one I can think of that wouldn't be being used is the one directly behind this controller. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, it could have to do with the fact I'm using RTGs. I don't know. Um, once again, though, if you are if you set this up, make sure and just do your conduits instead of the RTGs. Um, then you have radiation power. Um, basically, the higher that is, um, like that's the most important thing. As that goes up, um, so does the amount of antimatter that you get. Um, so you're going to get antimatter a bit faster. Um, and then the antimatter is um, basically once this builds up enough, I believe. Yeah, it's not going to show us any of that. But uh, once this builds up, you'll get a thing of antimatter. So if we take some electron capsules, we can throw those in there. It's going to fill up the fuel level. You'll notice it's not going to start running. Um, you have to apply a redstone signal to it. So once you do that, you'll see that it starts running. And we can come in here, we can hear it running. Let me actually turn up my volume here. So you guys can maybe hear it a little bit better. And there we go. It, to me, it's a very satisfying sound. I like that sound a lot. Um, I think he did a great job on that. Um, but you'll notice that our antimatter is slowly building up. It does take a very long time to get a single piece of antimatter. And you'll notice that my power is draining. So somewhere um, I'm using more power than 500 RF a tick. I'm not entirely sure, but somewhere it is so it's about to bottom out and you'll notice that the efficiency starts to drop um, because it's not running at full power anymore and you notice then if I shut it off it fills back up like immediately so it's a very very small draw 
And I really think it's because maybe this controller, I don't know. I have no clue. I have no clue. Um, but I th it would be fixed if you use the conduits um, to run it. So, um, But yeah, that's pretty much the way that it works. Like I said, it's, it's still a work in progress. So um, I can only cover so much on it. And, um, um, once your antimatter gets filled up, I believe it takes a thousand, uh, PPM to get a single piece of antimatter, if I'm correct on that. Um, so once that fills up, it'll just, um, you can't look at it. It'll just put the antimatter right into there. So, um, not too, too bad. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to let me know. Um, once it's fully implemented and um, all the different particles are in place and everything, I'll try to do a, another video. You know, I just kind of wanted to put one out so you guys can at least see it and, um, you know, see what what he's working on, what's what it's going to be like and everything. Because, honestly, it was a really exciting um, idea to me. Um, so... It is, like I said, it's going to be a very late game thing for me because it's going to be very expensive, especially if you want to build the 100 by 100. It's going to be crazy expensive, not just to build it, but also to power it and keep it fueled. So, um, But that's the beauty of this mod is because it's not simple things that you can create a couple days into a playthrough. It's, it's very much a mod that when you build a fission reactor, a fusion reactor, or a particle accelerator, you're going to be proud of that. Um, chances are, I mean, granted, maybe if you built like a little like 3x3 three three or 2x2 two two or something, a uh, fusion reactor, you might not be as proud of it. But, um, you know, one of any kind of a decent size, you are, chances are going to be very proud of it. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this short how-to series. Um, once again, I'm sorry this video took so long to get out. Um, I do apologize about that. I was going through a lot of uh, changes as far as editing and trying to figure out how I'm going to get the most out of like a day, you know, like um, as far as recording and editing and everything. Um, so for those of you that uh, have been waiting on this, I apologize and thank you so much for your patience. It's very, very much appreciated. Um, and I'll probably release another video fairly soon. I've been working on a reactor design. Um, still, you know, it's still a long ways from being done, but um, I'm trying to figure out the most efficient that I can build um, with just the default settings uh, for nuclear craft. So um, <clears throat> I hope you guys check that out whenever it comes out. Um, hopefully I'll get it out sooner rather than later. And, uh, yeah. So if you enjoyed this as always, please comment, like, subscribe. It's very, very much appreciated. And until next episode, do take care. And, um, also by the way, if you guys want, um, to keep up to date with the mod, um, nuclear craft mod, it's a YouTube channel. He does videos as well. So, um, he, uh, you know, covers the mod and stuff as it's updated and everything. So, uh, feel free to check him out as well. And, um, yeah. So, until next episode, do take care, and I will see you then.